So there is a very large need for new treatments in neurodegenerative diseases, and in particular, the age-related diseases that are like a tsunami for our healthcare systems all over the world. So there is a new perspective on these diseases, and that's that lipid and metabolic dysfunction precedes the cascade of protein aggregation that we've all grown so familiar with. And that proteinopathy now has treatments, you can remove amyloids, but with unfortunately limited functional benefits for patients. So instead, the strategy now is to correct lipid imbalances and transport in a metabolic context. There are a number of metabolic lipid molecules that accumulate in these diseases. Alois Alzheimer's described fat sacs in the cells in his original description. And we are now finding, in ways I will soon describe, that Alzheimer's disease, Lewy body dementia, human pix disease, and many other lysosomal storage diseases are linked in this way. So lipid dysregulation, then, is at the core of these diseases. And 15%, in fact, of all AD patients are homozygous for a gene called APOE44. There are three variants of this gene two, three, and four, and two-thirds of Alzheimer's disease, remarkably, are a carrier of this gene. If you have both uh, alleles, you have almost a 16-fold risk of getting the disease in your lifetime, and so on. But very importantly, APOE also links to other diseases, like Lewy body dementia, that I've studied extensively, where other genes that de develop on lipid uh, regulation and breakdown, like GBA1, combined make the biggest risk factors. And neiman Pix disease, which is a disease where you cannot export cholesterol from inside the cell, so lysosomes and endosomes get loaded, and so we have this lipid accumulation. So APOE is in the center of this picture. It gets loaded by an enzyme called ABCA1 with lipids, uh, and in particular cholesterol, and is then transferred to cells in need. One third of our brains is made up of lipids. And in fact, neurons are quite poor at producing it themselves, so it requires other cells to provide it to it. So APOE3 variant does not generate a risk for Alzheimer's disease. Instead, as you can see in the center there, the blue molecule APOE takes lipids into it and then delivers it. It does that better than APOE4, which creates a smaller particle although it only is different by one amino acid. So in order to understand this and really create a fundamental research that can make breakthroughs, we develop a platform to investigate how to improve APOE4 function. And what we did using human cells, as you see here, is blocking the lipid efflux in the cholesterol pathway. And as you can see by the yellow dots here, astrocytes or any other cell in this system will accumulate. The validation on the right shows you that when you block this MPC1 function, about 200 uh, units of cholesterol versus 50 in a normal cell is present. In red and green, you see two and three, and in the presence of these two recombinant proteins, there is cholesterol efflux and the cell uh, normalizes. APOE4 ca cannot do this properly and leaves the cholesterol inside the cell. So our innovation is therefore to try to attack this problem. And we do so by enhancing the lipid transport. The APOE mechanism that I mentioned then depends on the ABC1 binding, but also enhance the binding that we're testing. We're trying to increase the lipid load of this molecule to make it less toxic and more functional. Prediction is that two and three will work, APOE4 won't, as in the platform in the hands of will. The drug candidate we have worked from as a tool combo is called LB1. It's a synthetic peptide, doesn't exist in nature, but it performs this function of binding lipids and helping this interaction. What do we find? Well, remarkably, this LB1 peptide can rescue the cells in the platform. For example, as you can see, it lowers brain cell lipid and cholesterol burden. In the red and the green bars, you see that 2 and 3 performs this. 4 did not, but in the presence of LB1, we can see that this cholesterol efflux from the cell, or egress, occurs. A scrambled 16 mer peptide of the same composition with different sequence does not. Very importantly to my first slide, the amyloidogenic pathway in our work is downstream of this. So the amyloid precursor protein in C-terminal fragment accumulates in cells that are full of lipids, and for that matter, even damaged cells. In the prior theory, we would attack that downstream, but here you can see 
that the LB1 molecule in the red rectangle is able to perform now LAS2 and 3 versus the scrambled peptide. And even more importantly, perhaps, to all of us, is that the drug target in industry for decades, the base enzyme or the beta sites amyloid cleaving enzyme, increases in cells that are lipid accumulated. And when you have proper lipid management of the cells, as you can see on the graph on the right, base enzyme is reduced and compensates no more for this uh, abnormality. Versus the peptide and the controlled peptide on the very right does not perform. And finally, to have a phenotypic assay that really can uh, give us useful data, we find that these uh, interactions with LB1 improve cell viability and APOE4 particle size. So here on the right-hand side, you can see that 2 and 3, under these stressful conditions, lose about 20% of the cells over time. The APOE4 itself will lose about half. And the presence of this enhancer, we can save these cells, and the scrambled peptides cannot. So, of course, given the AI capabilities, currently we've used AlphaFold 3, and it shows what we had predicted. Uh, the a ABCA1, remember, is the key player for the lipid load of APOE below. And we can show that LB1, if you can see in slide C, is in fact located where it's supposed to be interacting with these two molecules uh, that do uh, this work. And we're, of course, using this in many versions to look for uh, novel ways of improving this molecule. So I've told you about this very important strategy to enhance APOE, APOE4 function in particular. And we've identified one molecule can to do that. But we're continuing uh, with work that tests high throughput screening to obtain other candidates and also do MedChem, of course, from the former slide in this way. We're looking to in this case, go to in vivo models for these very, very uh, formidable diseases, particularly neiman picks disease, for which we already have a, a plan, but also in vivo models to ob obtain IND-enabling studies for other indications. And so we've formed a very strong scientific team, a dream team, here at Mass General Brigham, at Harvard and MIT and elsewhere in the world, where people have committed to solve these problems. And we've also obtained interest from seasoned executives. So I very much look forward to discussing with you the potential of this work, and I believe it's going to be very important to have a health impact with these uh, efforts.